I think a struggle that we have a lot of times in our spiritual life, and, and you see it not just in ourselves, but in other people too, the question a lot of times is asked directly or indirectly, you know, if, w what do I have to do to be saved? You know, will this particular action save me? Or will this particular action, you know, lead to me uh, going to hell or something along those lines, not being saved, right? And so we, we, we couch our, you know, maybe we look at our Lenten penances and the things that maybe we agreed to take on and we ask, you know, if, if, is it really the case, like if I don't drink Diet Coke on Tuesday, February 20th, does that really mean that, does that really have an effect on whether or not I'm going to be saved? You know, and in, 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 this, in the same way with a asking that about sins, you know, is, if I do this particular thing, will that, will that mean that I can't be saved and, and so on and so forth? We ask, like, in, in the context of this big question, you know. And certainly the church does say, you know, one of the precepts of the church, the kind of the basic hurdles to get over is fasting on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday and not having meat on the Fridays of Lent. But I'm talking way beyond that, right? Like all of the things that we do, the church doesn't say anything about uh, taking on any, any particular spiritual practice. Nothing is commanded of us in that sense. And yet many of us do those things. Many of us take on prayer. We take on fasting of some kind. We give things up. We deny ourselves. And again, I think as we start to get through Lent, and here we are, you know, it's like we look at it now and there's like, oh my gosh, there's still, you know, 37 days of Lent or, you know, all of this. Does, does my not drinking Diet Coke or does my not playing this video game or whatever it might be, does that really matter in the sense of my salvation? If I drink the Coke, you know, can I still be saved? That's, that's, again, we ask that in that, that large context. And I think the problem with that is that it misses the point, right? And what we, what, we, what we hear actually in the first reading today is this idea of covenant. God enters into a, a covenant with Noah, with the rainbow, right? And he enters into other covenants throughout the Old Testament. And a covenant is a relationship, right? It's a, it's a back and forth. It's a, it's a, it's a, again, it's a human exchange. It's a relationship between people, between friends, Right? And so I think when we're asking the wrong question a lot of times, when we, when we ask ourselves, does my fasting today save me? Or does my denying myself this thing, does that save me? It's like, you know, I, I think it's kind of, we're missing the point. It, it'd be like going to, you know, a, a, from one spouse going to another and saying, if I don't buy you flowers on Valentine's Day, will you divorce me? Well, the answer is probably going to be no. You know, like, I don't think anybody's, if the, the, the flowers is an in or an out. You know, if there's no flowers, then it's, we're not married anymore, right? But that's not, of course, why people buy flowers for their spouses, right? There's, it's a relationship. And so all of these millions of things add up to a relationship, right? There's no one specific event, typically, right, that, that, that makes or breaks a relationship. Sometimes, there, sometimes things are, and, and certainly in our spiritual life, we talk about there can be things where we make a dramatic break from God. God never stops loving us. But we can turn from God through free will. But the vast majority of the things that we do in our life, right, are not that. They are the thousands, the millions of little things that, are, that, that we do in building up a relationship. And that's why we do them. Right? That's why we take on these things. That's why we spend time in prayer. Right? That's why we do all of these things. And in Lent, that sense is heightened of these things. Right? We recognize more clearly. Why? Because as we begin to strip things away that are unimportant or that are less significant. So I strip away the Diet Coke. Or I strip away the things that, yes, they're not going to lead to my eternal damnation. But they are getting in the way, perhaps, of the relationship. They've gotten me maybe to think of God less. And so, as we hear in the gospel, Jesus heads out into the desert. Jesus does this. He shows us the way, right? He says, this is how you deepen a relationship. You strip some of those things away that have gotten in the way to spend time with a person that loves you and that you are trying to love in return, right? That's what Lent is, right? It's not this, we, we, we shouldn't, I think, think of all of these things, each and every little thing, as whether we're saved or not, it's a building up of a relationship, right? And that's what strive, that, that's what hopefully spurs us on through this season of Lent, the recognition that I've had, I've let things get in the way of the relationship, and I'm going to make that relationship, again, the focus of what I'm doing. 
And so we pray for our Lenten, whatever it is that we're taking on, the, the things that we're denying ourselves, the things that we're adding to our spiritual life, that we might see them not in the frame, framework just of you know, a black and white, in or out type of thing with this, with this authoritarian figure, but that we might begin to see them as opportunities to deepen a relationship with this God who has made us and who loves us and who desires to spend time with us now and also desires to spend eternity with us.